had to start the year of FDS off with a bang. So here's everybody's favorite, baseball. Of the seven launch titles for the Famicom Disk System, four of them were sports games that Nintendo had already published. So we have to get through some vegetables before we get to the good stuff. When I first looked at Nintendo Baseball almost exactly three years ago, since it was the eighth Famicom game released, I noted that there were a lot of baseball games to come on the Famicom. Of course, it's one thing to know that there's a lot of baseball games, it's another to actually play all of them. And for that reason, I'm very pleased to note that the Famicom Disk System only has two baseball games, unless I missed one somehow. And since the second one will be episode 99, you have exactly six months before we get to that. The disc system was effectively dead by the time the baseball explosion really kicked in in 1989, so I'm grateful for that. The cartridge version of baseball cost 3,800 yen. Actually a bit of a bargain since by 1986, game prices had typically risen 20% to 4,900 yen. Even if the games were just over two years old at this point, that's still a pretty good price for one of the Famicom's biggest hits. It also made it a natural choice for this re-release. This was the only baseball game on the Famicom, and the most popular sports game Nintendo had. They could update the stats, do a remaster for the new technology, you know, the exact same thing that happens now. Well, except that the players in baseball don't have any stats, and they didn't do any refreshing of the sound or graphics. It's the exact same game. Now the positive thing for players at this point is that due to a lack of competition, Nintendo's baseball was holding up pretty well in 1986. Hardball had just been released for computers, and that was a big step up in how baseball games play, but that influence hadn't leaked over into the more populist consoles yet. Let's take a look at the game itself. It's baseball. There's really only one game mode here, though you can play it one or two players, and that's just a single exhibition match between two teams. If you start a one-player game, your opponent is already pre-selected, and you won't be able to pick that team, even if they're your favorite. While the teams only have letters, they're really all members of the Central League. The Hiroshima Carp, Chunichi Dragons, Yomiuri Giants, Yakult Swallows, Hanshin Tigers, and Yokohama Whales. The Whales changed their name about 10 years ago to the DNA Bay Stars, and the DNA there is the name of the software company that bought them. But the names and team options reflected the league in 1983. Baseball is a traditional American sport descended from the British game of rounders. In the game, a player called the pitcher throws a ball at a person standing at the base of the field who attempts to strike the ball with a wooden stick called a bat. Once the ball is struck, the batter then attempts to run to four positions on the field called bases in consecutive order. The player is eliminated if the ball is caught in the air after they've struck it, if an opposing player holding the ball touches them with it, or if an opposing player gets the ball to a base that they are running toward. But if the batter reaches a base before the ball and remains there, then they won't be eliminated and play continues to a new batter. In Nintendo's baseball, there's only two views, an infield and an outfield, so no specific batting view. The control scheme is kept simple, since B-button interactions work with bases, throwing the ball to a base, or telling your runner there to take off, while the A-button does the primary action, pitching the ball to the plate, or swinging the bat. Fielding is mostly automatic, People will run down the balls or try to catch them themselves, but a little bit of fine-tuning helps. And once the fielder has the ball, you actually have to do something with it. If somebody is standing on base and they catch the ball, it doesn't count as tagging the base, you actually have to hit B and push in that direction to run them to the base, and then it counts. The big problem with the fielding is that fielders typically don't outpace the ball. So if the ball is hit into a pocket, then they very, very slowly chase behind the ball for a long time. It's the kind of thing that can lead to some very high-scoring games. There's no differentiation between the players. No power hitter that comes in and might get a home run for you. The pitchers don't get worn out from throwing continuous fastballs. This is some very basic baseball. 
It was better than anything else that was available when it was released in 1983. But even by 1986, there was at least one other option out there. And by the end of the year, Namco will release their family stadium, which will be the standard for video game baseball for the next 10 years. Baseball is a historical curiosity, but probably not something you'd want to go back to.